Strange Wills. Starring the distinguished Hollywood actor, Warren William, and featuring Peggy Weber and William Conrad with Howard Culver and an all-star Hollywood cast. Original music by Del Castillo. Dead men's wills are often strange. We cannot attempt to understand them or try to find the answers. We can but tell the story. This is Warren William bringing you the story, Cross Wind. But first... Now back to Warren William as John Francis O'Connell in Crosswind. This story opens in a state prison where Patrick Malone is awaiting execution by hanging. His crime-studied career was finally terminated by the police, and after a fair and impartial trial, he was sentenced to death for murder. After all of his appeals had been denied, Malone was transferred to the state prison to await his execution. It is shortly after midnight. The guards in the main cell block are making their rounds. Uh, guard! Guard! Who's calling the guard? Who's calling? Oh, uh, oh so it's you. Kill him alone. Uh, I thought you was a tough guy. I'm, I'm dying. You're ahead of schedule, killer. That comes later. Call it. The sawbones. I'm tired. I'll come in and take a look and see first, killer. But if you've got any funny ideas, remember there's three doors you got to open before you reach the wall. You won't mind if I lock myself in, will you, killer? That'll make four doors. Sawbones. Get the sawbones. I'm not going to wait the sawbones until I know you need them. Now, what's your beef? Water. Water, get me a drink. Yeah. Forehead's cold enough. Maybe it's your conscience, killer. Maybe you're seeing ghosts in the night. Ghosts of those guys you bump. What? Okay, okay, I'll get you a drink. If you're still sick after this drink, tell the guard on the next relief. He'll be on in seven minutes. Here, sit up and drink this. Yeah. Okay, sucker. You fell for it. You feel this rod pressed against your belly? Yeah, I feel a killer. What you gonna do? I'm gonna bump you off if you so much as peep. Don't be a fool. There's four locked doors, steel doors. You'll never make it. I'm going out of here tonight. Feet first to walking, but I'm going out. Now, turn around, mister. Quiet like. All right. All right, take off your clothes. That monkey suit. Okay. It's your funeral. Just shut up and give me the clothes. Here's my cap. My coat. One of my pants, too. I want everything. Yeah. Here they are. Uh, now just stand still and keep your mitts up while I get into them. <laughs> How soon before the relief guard comes? Four minutes. You haven't got a chance, killer. Yeah? Well, that's my worry. Now, here's a little kiss to knock you out of commission. Now, I'll tuck you into my little trundle bed. Okay, boys, give me cover. Yeah, 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 yeah. Fire! Yeah. Fire, you monster, yeah. I'll turn on the fire hose. Yeah, 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 
Bella Malone must be captured. So said the governor, so said the mayor, so said the district attorney and the chief of police. A dragnet was thrown over the entire state. Every policeman was ordered back to report to his precinct. Killer Malone must be captured. His escape was the general topic of conversation. Even the young and beautiful Margaret Levering, my client, and I were talking about it in my office. Really, I've never been so frightened, John. I imagine I see that killer Malone behind every tree, even under my bed. <laughs> <laughs> With 10,000 policemen looking for him, it won't be long before they get him. But you won't be here to see the excitement. That's right. I'm sailing tonight. <laughs> you don't look very happy about leaving, Margaret. Frankly, the thought of a trip to South America on a tramp steamer bores me silly. And I did so want to attend opening night at the opera. <laughs> Why did Father have to make such a silly provision in his will? I can see his reasoning. If you are to inherit his steamship interest, I think it only right that you get some first-hand information about traveling on a freighter. Would have been much more fun on a luxury liner. Yes, I realize that, but um, this way you sort of get the feel of the business. You'll see how cargo is shipped, how it's unloaded. How dull. <laughs> and that crew, I can see them now, the captain squirting tobacco juice in the sea. Oh, that's why you're wrong, Margaret. Captain Leslie DeHaven is handsome enough to be in the movies. You? Yeah. Well, that's something. Maybe I won't be so bored after all. <laughs> I'm sure you'll enjoy every minute of your trip. Now then, I'll see you off at, uh, what time does the Olympic sail? They told me at midnight. All right, then. I'll be there to see you off. It must be nice to know that after one cruise to South America, you'll inherit a steamship line with a face value of a million dollars. <gasps> but a girl doesn't have to go through to inherit a measly million <laughs> these days. <laughs> I wouldn't consider a million dollars so measly. That's because you never had to buy gowns and shoes for a lady. Oh, well, maybe you're right at that. <laughs> What's more, I, uh, I guess I'll never have to. Spoken like a true bachelor. <laughs> well... I suppose if I'm to catch the Olympic at midnight, I'd better go home and get ready for the ordeal. And John? Yes, Margaret? Wish me excitement. Lots of excitement. I wish. Yeah, what a break. Fog is thick as pea soup. If I can only stow away on one of these tubs. Hey, cops. Okay, coppers, come and get me. Hey, what's this? Piano crates. SS Olympic. Destination Rio de Janeiro. Well, move over, Piana. You got company. About 11 o'clock, I arrived at the docks to see my client off. The night was heavy, full of fog. As I parked my car, I heard a great commotion coming from the direction of the pier. I walked slowly down the long wooden ramp. What was going on? Had they found Killer Malone here on the docks? Each step I advanced, the excitement became more pronounced. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. Heavy fog. Hurt you? Well, well, for heaven's sake, if I haven't run smack into the Honorable John Francis O'Connell. Commissioner <laughs> Holbrook. <laughs> well, this beats all. <laughs> what are you up to? Running around here bumping into honest citizens. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got a tip that Killer Malone might be down here on the docks. Killer Malone? Down here? That's uh, one of the 10,000 tips we've had since he escaped. Uh -huh. Personally, I don't put much stock in it. No? Why not? Well, there's no place to hide out down here. And if he ever got on one of these boats, they'd nab him quick. Do you think, Commissioner, that it'll be safe for me to go aboard and say goodbye to a client of mine? <laughs> safe enough. That is, if you don't get in the way of Killer Malone. And if I do, then what? <laughs> uh, don't stop to ask questions. <laughs> <laughs> Just run like the very devil. Uh, excuse me, mister. we got to load these piano crates. Oh, I'm sorry. That's all right. I don't know if we don't want any accidents. No, thanks. Okay, take her away. <laughs> Well, I'll be moving along. I hope you get your man, Commissioner. And um, if I should run into him on board the Olympic... Uh, what'll you do, John? What'll I do? <laughs> nothing. Absolutely nothing. Well, 
this leavering. I promise that my new boss will be extended every courtesy of the ship. In fact, it'll be a pleasure to attend to it personally. I hope I'm forgiven for thinking you some decrepit old sea dog who spits tobacco juice all over his chin. <laughs> I tried to tell Margaret that you were quite a handsome fella, Captain. Oh, oh well, now. Oh, Captain, don't be so modest. I'm sure that my trip's going to be quite delightful. Perhaps even exciting. I can't promise you much in the way of excitement, Miss Liebering. In fact, these South American cruisers are mostly routine. <laughs> but there's a moon, isn't there? Hey, now, you let me handle my own romancing. And don't be giving the captain any suggestions. Yeah, there is a moon, all right. And it's a beauty. If you like scenery, we have a lot of that, too. Strange places, foreign ports, tropics. Well, I see it's one minute to midnight. Time to shove off, isn't it, Captain? Yes, we're all loaded and ready to go. Well, then, goodbye, Margaret. And happy sailing. Goodbye, John. Oh, uh, by the way, Captain... Yes, Mr. O'Connell. There's a possibility, a very remote one, of course, that uh, you might have a notorious passenger aboard. <laughs> yes, I'd heard about it. You mean this Killer Malone? The one and only. I'm afraid he'd have a pretty hard time. There aren't very many places to hide aboard ship. He'd find it rather rough to walk through customs at the ports we touch. No, he'd have better sense. Well, that's what I think, too. I only mentioned it because just before I came aboard, I met my old friend, Commissioner Holbrook, on the dock. The place is literally covered with police, you know. Well, I guess I'll have to run for it now. Uh, goodbye, sir. Don't worry about Miss Levering. I'll bring her back brown as a berry. Goodbye again, John. And don't worry. I know I'm going to have a wonderful time. A simply wonderful time. <laughs> Two days out of Frisco, Margaret sent me her first cable. It contained only one word, but that was enough. It simply said, super. <laughs> well, my client was apparently enjoying herself. Now you know, Margaret, why men will always go down to sea in ships. And to think I almost miss seeing it. Oh, Leslie, it's so wonderful. The moon makes things almost as bright as day. And look at the stars. They look almost as big as lanterns. And close enough to pick. Perhaps that's what Father had in mind when he insisted that I take a sea voyage before inheriting his steamship line. Huh? I wouldn't be surprised. He was a great man, Margaret. Your father sailed with me many times. He loved the sea. And this was his favorite trip. But, Leslie, honestly, wouldn't you prefer being in command of a luxury liner, having beautiful girls coming up on the bridge to idolize you? Oh, <laughs> not for me. No, Margaret, give me the sweep of the tropical breeze. Give me a good stout ship filled with cargo for foreign ports and places. And a crew of men that are rough and ready. You are romantic, aren't you? <laughs> but I haven't heard you mention just one thing that makes the picture complete. Well, I left something out. Maybe. It, uh, it couldn't be you, could it? Could be, Leslie. Could be. Two of Crosswinds, written by Ken Crofine and directed by Robert Webster Light, in just a moment. But first, a brief message from your announcer.
And now back to Crosswind, starring Warren William as John Francis O'Connell. Six days out of San Francisco, I received another cablegram from Margaret Levering. This one was even more cryptic. It said, playing for keeps. <laughs> I began to think that I'd started something. Margaret, you'd better get to bed early tonight and get some rest. That is, of course, if you still want to see the island in the morning. What time will we pass it, Leslie? Around five. Oh, goodness, that is early. Well, don't get up unless you want to. Oh, I do want to. It's our first sight of land since we left. Yeah, it's a beautiful tropical island. We go close enough to get a good look. There's only one thing wrong with it. We're going to land? No, it's forbidden. Forbid? Why, Leslie? Well, I'll tell you all about it tomorrow morning at five o'clock. That is, if you're not too sleepy. Oh, I won't be a promise. I may never see this mysterious island again as long as I live. Oh, I wouldn't say that. I make this trip regularly. Why, Captain, how you interest me. I'm here, isn't that enough? Get out. Get out this instant, I'll call the captain. <laughs> Tough, huh? What do you want? Uh, first, something to eat. What is it? I've got some crackers and cheese. Where? There on the dresser. Wait, I'll slip on my rope and... Just stay where you are, sister. Where's the light? There's a little lamp on the dresser. Okay. They recognize me, do you? Oh, kill him alone. Yeah, kill him alone at your service. So you did make the ship? Came aboard in a piano creek. But you can't... Can't get off, huh? <laughs> what makes you think so? They're the customs, the police. Don't worry about that, sister. I've done all right so far. Broke out of prison, didn't I? Got aboard this tub, didn't I? I'm not caught yet. What do you want? Well, I'm going to eat these crackers and ask a few questions. If you don't mind. No, no not at all, Mr. Mo. What do you want to know? First off, what's your next port? Rio. We arrive there tomorrow night. Rio, huh? Then we go south, all down along the coast. I see. What have you in mind, Mr. Malone? Uh, keeping away from the law, mostly. Say, you ain't bad looking. You think so? Too bad we can't be seeing more of each other. I'm afraid that would be rather difficult, Mr. Malone. You see, we're, we're like crosswinds, each blowing a different way, aren't we? <laughs> yeah, that's right, lady. Crosswinds. Say, uh, what time is it? Oh, it's five minutes to five. What are you so nervous about, sister? Expecting company? I'd hate to think of some guy coming in and disturbing us. But if someone did, what would you do? What'd you expect me to do? Kiss him? Listen, sister, you're safe as long as I'm safe. It's going to be up to you to keep everything peaceful like until I can get off this tub. Until you get off, Mr. Malone? That's the ticket. <laughs> Supposing, supposing I helped you to get off. Supposing I could help you get to an island. An island, huh? You want to maroon me so that I can be picked up later? Is that your game, sister? No, good heavens, no. Well, why don't you tell me about it, then? Well, this island, we're due there in just a few minutes. It's a beautiful island. Our, yeah? our ship comes within easy swimming distance. What's on the island? Well, that's, that's the best part of it. Just... Jungles. A few natives, I suppose. Fishing boats. Mm -hmm. Well, lots of fishing boats. And no policemen, not even one. And what am I supposed to do? Well, you could swim to the island. After you're there, you could hire one of those fishermen, and they could take you to some place on the mainland where no one would ever catch you. I'd be free, huh? Free the rest of my life. Say, you catch quick, all right. 
When did you say we'd reach this island? Any minute. Wait, let me open this porthole. Have a better look. Hey, you're right. I see it. That's what I've been telling you. You'll go, won't you, Mr. Malone? Uh Uh-uh. Nope, it's no deal. I think I'll stick around here for a few more days. I'll wait for something else to turn up. You mean you aren't going? Why should I? You can be sick for a couple of days. Listen, baby, I'll hide in this closet, but remember, I got the barrel of this gun pointed right at you. I'll remember, I'll remember. Margaret! Margaret, are you awake? Well, answer him. Tell him you're sick. I'm awake, Captain. But I'm not feeling well. Not feeling well? What? What's the matter? May I come in? No. No, don't come in, Captain. I'm sure I'll feel better tomorrow. Well, we're passing the island now. I thought you wanted to see it. And the story. Don't you want to hear it? Don't bother. Tell it to me later. After we get to Rio. To Rio? Rio? Say, what is this? You must be sick. I'm coming in no matter what no, you say. No, no, please don't. Open the door for him, but remember. Oh, remember, but don't. Open the door. Just a minute, Captain. I'll let you in. Margaret, what in heaven's name is wrong? What? Are you trembling? I'm trembling. I tell you, it's just cold in here. Well, here you are down in the tropics, and you say you're cold. Here, come on over here and sit down. I want to see if you're getting malaria. You certainly have the symptoms. I haven't any malaria, Leslie. There's nothing wrong with me. Now go. I'll see you later, huh? I won't leave this cabin until you tell me the truth. Oh, you fool, you fool. I'll take over from here, Captain. Leslie, don't move it. Let's kill her, Malone. Kill her, Malone? Yeah, the one and only. Now back into the corner, both of you. And Captain, the lady knows I ain't fooling. Yes, yes, Leslie. You may have her frightened, but not me, Malone. Oh, no? No. What makes you so sure I won't feed you some hot lead? Because guns make noise. Yeah, maybe you're right, wise guy. I'm going to bop you over the head nice and easy like. And I'm heading for that island. Well, it sounds swell, Malone, but first you've got to get me. No, Leslie, no, he'll kill you. <clears throat> okay, mister. That was a lucky punch. See how this feels. <clears throat> well, so long, Crosswind. Thanks for the tip about that island. I'm going for a swim. In just a moment, you will hear the startling climax of this amazing story. But first, here is a brief message from your announcer. And now back to Warren William as John Francis O'Connell in Crosswind. For the second time in less than a week, Killer Malone made good his escape. As he swam to the island, he looked back over his shoulder and saw the tramp steamer Olympic fading into the distance. No effort was being made to stop his bold attempt to freedom. Finally, his feet touched bottom. He stood up and began wading to shore. <sighs> I made it. I made it. Now to get a boat and head for the mainland. It's funny, I I don't see none. I wonder if that crosswind tame it. Yeah, yeah, I see people. Lots of people. (laughs) Say everything's going to be okay. Hey! Hey, you! What's the matter with that mug? He keeps motioning me to keep away. Hey, you! What's the matter? What you running for? Come back here! Come back or I'll bust your teeth in! (laughs) 
Back on board the Olympic, Margaret was desperately trying to revive Captain De Haven. After Killer Malone had knocked him unconscious in her cabin. Oh. Leslie. Oh, Leslie, darling, wake up. Oh. Wake up. Oh. Darling. Darling. Can you hear me? Killer Malone's escaped. He's swimming to the island. Where? Oh, my head. Oh, Leslie could have killed you. Margaret, you... But where's... Where's... That's what I'm trying to tell you, darling. He jumped off the boat. He's swimming to the island. Leslie, isn't there something we can do? Killer Malone will get away unless we stop him. You say he swam to... to that island? Yes, Leslie's there by now. He'll get a boat and escape to the mainland. We've got to do something quick. Take it easy, Margaret. There's no hurry. No hurry? That's exactly what I want him to do. Swim for that island. What do you mean? I don't understand. Do you remember my telling you there was only one thing wrong with that island? Yes, I remember. Remember I told you ships were forbidden to dock there? All ships. Yes? Yes, you did, Leslie. Why? Why? That island, Margaret, has been a leper colony for over 50 years. Killer Malone made it safely to the island, all right. But instead of finding the fishing boats and the freedom he'd expected, he found himself right in the middle of a leper colony, totally cut off from the rest of the world. I'm sure that many times before he finally died, that he wished he had never escaped from the death cell at State's Prison. And as for Margaret? <laughs> well, she came to the very sensible conclusion that she couldn't run a steamship line all by herself. So what do you think she did? She signed on a first mate for life. She and Captain Leslie were married the day after their ship docked at Rio. Next week, I'm going to tell you a story of the theater and Broadway. A young and beautiful girl was left an enormous fortune with a provision that she work and earn her own living for a whole year before she inherited her estate. Now this young lady had always had a yen for the theater, and she became a chorus girl. But that was just the beginning. For the delightfully entertaining story of Backstage Broadway, listen to Dance Director. This is Warren William inviting you to be with us again next week. <laughs> Strange Wills is a Telaways feature produced in Hollywood. Names, places, and events have all been changed so that no reflection can fall on any person or persons, living or dead. <laughs>